I know you get that shit for it. I can no, tell. It's, it's not even. It's not even my fault anymore. If we're like in season, because I get like designs and shit in my head, right? Continuity. So even if I'm not working so today, I didn't shoot today, right? But on the schedule, I have to come in and get a haircut. <laughs> That's great. For you live a good life, man. I right. love it, bro. Listen, <laughs> I want. I want to give you your flowers. You might know this man from Snowfall. You might know him from mm. Rail, but you damn uh. sure know him. From Bel Air, <laughs> my man Jordan L. Jones. <laughs> Woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How you feeling, bro? Man, I'm good. I appreciate you for having me on. Man, man. I appreciate you. Long overdue. Time. Long, Long overdue. For overdue. Sure. overdue. Long overdue. For sure, bro. So, I mean, I, w- I want to get into. I mean, we were talking about so much stuff before. We I know, started, but <laughs> first, I wanna I wanna get into your story mm-hmm. and just how you got into the acting game because you know it's a. It's a game that a lot of people want to get into and Man. have no clue how to. And Man. a lot of people also think that, you know, you just walk into an audition and next thing you know, you're jazz and life's yeah, beautiful bro. and everything is, woo! <laughs> yeah. So I like, you know, bringing niggas down to earth a little bit, Please. you know, letting them know a little bit of the, the struggle, yeah, the, for like, the, all the auditions we ran. Hey, what's good, brother? Hey, man, so hey, many. Knock it out. Good, man. Good luck. And rooting for each other because, man, even if I don't get it, if my nigga gets it, we won. We won. Honestly. We won. Nah, um, it's funny. I really got into acting because, like, you know how everyone, like, grows up. Like, we play a sport. So, like, I'm going to right. the league. I, like, knew early. I, like, I was pretty good at basketball. But, like, I just knew I kind of got it once I got to, like, 11th grade. <laughs> yeah. But I was a class clown. <clears throat> like ah. a class, I was always getting kicked out of classes and stuff like that. I also went to like a predominantly like white school, okay. and so like a lot of shit that like if I at my public school, like if I would say this is this is not like you wouldn't get in trouble or anything. But, they, but now they're like, well, you can't say that and this. So I was in trouble a lot just for doing <laughs> kids shit. That's kind of normal, but whatever. Yeah. And so like and just being funny and stuff, and people are like yo, you should act. The thing is, my mom is also an actress. My dad is also an actor. He, my dad's really not around. Okay. Um. I have crazy stories about that too, but <laughs> but um, my my mom is an actress, but she actually didn't want me to act because she knows how tumultuous this journey is, yeah. and just how it's not like you just wake up and oh yeah, even if someone says you're good, that actually means nothing in this business. You get told that you're good and you're great for the part twenty four seven. I'm a I'm a big fan. Every, we're, we're big fans. <laughs> what? We're big fans over what? here. Yeah, great, great That's job. Great, but great the, why job. don't you? Uh, Hi, you're a big fan. I, I heard. I heard you're a fan. If I did this audition perfectly. Why am I not? And it really, it really has nothing to do with you. So my mom actually didn't want me to act. Right. But I tried it, and I think because my first audition I got, it was a uh, NFL Play 60 commercial, like sports. Oh, authority. I remember that. Yeah, yeah old, Play 60. Play that was 60. on Nickelodeon. And All that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like for Sports Authority. But it was like my first audition, and I got it. So keep in mind, I'm thinking that it was low key easy. So then I go to college. Um, it was for a commercial, but then I go to college. I went to Arizona, and I transferred to USC because I'm like, okay, I want to do entertainment for right. sure. But being in college and being an actor, it's kind of hard because, you know, like you get auditioned like right now and be like, it could be due at 7 p.m. or tomorrow morning. Yeah. But depending on like what I got, I got a final tomorrow or, you know, whatever assignment or class I can't skip or yeah. whatever. So it was just hard to do that. And I so I just knew I wanted to be an entertainer. Um, cra- this is actually a crazy story. Uh-huh. Um, I was a PA for a show called Home and Family. But it was on the Universal lot. And I just felt like, you know, you kind of got to start from the ground up. Like, I just yeah. want to be around entertainers. So I was a PA. People were talking to me fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> I'm scrubbing the bottom of trailers. I'm I'm making crafty. Like, I'm, like, cooking sausages and shit. I swear to God, oh, bro. Wow. It was crazy. But it, was, it wasn't cool. It was really honestly shitty. But it was that shitty where you're like, I'm going through this for a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I know this is shitty, but I'm keep doing it because it's shitty. And I know this is where I got to start. Right. One day, bro, I just literally was like, I'm going to just quit with no plan. I know <laughs> that, you know, I had got a manager from uh, one of my best friends. His mom's best friend was a manager looking for talent. I'm still my manager mm-hmm. today. Wow. And dude, tough. crazy. And I just went and auditioned for them and they liked it. And uh, and then I'm, I quit my PA job, bro. 
And with no plan, like with rent or anything like that. And within like a month, month and a half, I, I, I think I booked like a thing like NCIS or something. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I know I did NCIS, by the way. It's not like I've done all this shit. But <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, but uh, I just don't remember the first thing that, that I did. It was either Criminal Minds or NCIS. But Listen, I know your ass was being interrogated regardless. somewhere. Man, that, somewhere. That, that, that's Somewhere I was in the rook, man. You already know how it is. The <laughs> they come in and you like, look, whatever, whatever. You're either that guy or you're the man. I ain't saying man, shit. Man, well, I ain't saying shit. We're my lawyer. Like that's <laughs> yes. That's uh, it. We you know that's the that's the role for us for real. <laughs> um, but I did that. But I think what's the craziest part is fast forward real quick to Bel Air. Mm-hmm. Uh, season one. The same exact place where I used to do lockups and crafty and everything in the influencer house with Hillary mm-hmm. is where we shoot. So the first time we take the van there, dude, I had no clue where we were going. But I know we shoot on Universal, but right. Universal's a big ass lot. Like whatever's mm-hmm. on the whole other side. And we pull up, bro, and we're rehearsing, bro. I start like tearing up. And the director's like, Are you okay? I say, Yeah, I just need a minute, bro. Cause I hadn't been in that exact room for like five years. And when I did, just it took me oh. back to what I was thinking back then. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone has dreams and stuff. But, like, you know, people say, like, man, I knew you was going to It's like, yeah, thank you guys for saying that. You guys are my friends. But, but like, me, myself, and how I was thinking was just, like, you know, one day at a time, seeing all this stuff. I was so used to, like, this could be it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so being where I'm at now, and I still have so much, you know, yeah. to do, so far to go. But coming back. And shooting in the same exact place where I was like, man, I'm finna quit this and I'm finna be something. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. So I started, you know, tearing nah, up man. and it was crazy. So that's that's an amazing That's thing. that's me. <laughs> but no, but it's it's the it's the perseverance, man. And and I think that changes to kind of go back to what we were talking about before we started mm-hmm. rolling. That is why you don't live in that fantasy land. Yeah. Cause you you know what it's like to be in that same spot, yeah. And no one give a fuck, man. No one give a fuck. <laughs> and and now it's, uh, uh, Mr. Jones, would you like some? Very, but you, you have more appreciation for the person man. bringing you a water when you've brought water, dude. You know, it's <laughs> a, it's a whole different. Like, damn, your job. I know your job stuff. Like, I I remember the time when I started realizing. Uh, after I shoot started like producing my own stuff and mm-hmm. shooting music videos, yeah. then I started realizing like, oh shit! When you tell me to take my clothes off in the trailer and go home, like, yeah. no, these people have like a whole another two hours. Oh my god, oh, bro! That's why you don't want to push call because they have a whole man. Oh, you you don't especially because like you said, they treat you so nice mm-hmm. and everything. But for me. I was a PA. Yeah. So I do certain stuff like, you know, they'll come to me like, hey, like lunch is this, yeah, yeah, I can bring it to them. I'm like, no, you can just tell me where it is or like where the water is. Yeah. I'm not tripping. And also, I'm not ashamed of like what I went through. So everybody on set knows I was a PA. Right. Like I talk to PAs and like, mm-hmm. you know, even the stand ins and stuff like that. Like we kick it and everything because like I've been there, bro, and nobody's di- Like we all got to pee and bleed and shit, bro. Yeah. I never even really under. Still, that my mom always raised me to say, like, you get more bees with honey, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I get it, like, you know, the phrase, like, nice guys, you know, finish last, whatever. That's just, it's just not true. Yeah. It's just not, you know? (laughs) It's it's nice, dumb guys. You don't have to be like, you don't have to finish last just because you're good to people. Yeah. That's 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 not how that works. That's not how that works. works. I also think when it's funny, when you break it down, someone had this, uh, had this perspective and it changed a lot of how I thought. Even the people we consider evil mm-hmm. generally spread more good than some of the people we would say are the best people. The best people because that's at fair. the end of the day, they employ thousands. Yeah, they do. That's thousands. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like even yeah. like people in customer service jobs, people like think how many people alone just work at like Tesla. Yeah. Or Amazon. Like, don't get me, or Facebook. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they all have the best practices. No. But you're spreading a lot of, a lot of bad, but you're also spreading a lot lot of of good. good. You're right. You know, it's crazy. I never actually even thought about it like that. It's weird. It's weird. It is weird. It's like owning a hospital. You're probably a piece of shit, (laughs) but you're also, (laughs) people are getting better. Yes, people are getting better. And you supply that. Thank God for you. 
Yeah. Never thought about it like so, that. Uh, Never thought about it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's <laughs> this same guy who owns this hospital though, also owns this private prison and he's such an asshole. Yep. It's like, man, yeah. honestly, I never thought about it like that. It's, 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 there's, a, there's always more gray area. Yeah. People like to look at things that are, you know, purely yeah. black and white. And it's like, nah, there be a lot of gray and a lot of stuff. Yeah. Should be nuanced. Damn, I never, <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. That's so crazy. I never thought about it. So let, let's, let's thank the assholes because you don't know the good that these assholes have yeah. done. Or how many, they've been the blueprint for somebody mm -hmm. who, works under their infrastructure and yeah. goes, you know what? I don't have to do it like you though. I'm gonna learn your skills. I don't have yeah. to be, I don't have to do it like that. You know, I don't, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a nuanced world. <laughs> Sorry, you just have, have like a whole different take on this. That's so crazy. Like even like, you know, like with the strike and like, you know, mm, yeah, you know, we're looking at networks as oh, I'm like, why won't you? It's like, well, regardless, we've employed everybody. <laughs> we have employed everyone. Like, you have something to stop coming to. Yes. <laughs> you do have something that we gave you to stop yeah. coming. I'm crying. See, th that is why. Oh, that's why I am. I am such a proponent of uh, like ownership and like. And don't get me wrong. It's easy to just say I'm a proponent of ownership. Yeah, yeah sure. right. Yeah. But I mean, in a sense of like, oh, like being in this industry for so long, knowing how rocky this road can be. Yeah. And then also seeing like the people who never lose. Yes. But those are the people who create the thing. Like the same way, you know, we make a reel, they make a TV show. That's you know, man. It's the same shit. Wow. It, it's just on a it's a, it's a, a different, different level. level. It's a different level. And we, the same and, we, and we have the distribution. Yeah. We have the Yeah. You know, it's it's think of it this way. We look at the I always say this, you look at the MLB, you look at the NFL, mm -hmm. you look at the NBA. These things seem larger than life. They like, do. You can't replicate. Like you, damn near, like you couldn't replicate it. They're just another business that can go Man, out of business, of business. like anything it else. Could. WWE and WWF is one of the few things we've seen that is not a traditional sport. Mm -hmm. Be able to live in that space, be on TV. Yeah. Most things can't do that. at all. That's hard. Like unless it's like you said, like NFL, like mm -hmm. NBA, because. People are going to come up and people are going to be good at this sport and we can replace whoever we can the always best replace. Yes. Yes. Wow. It's so it's a weird. Same like you said, same with WWE. Yeah. It's like, man, like we had the Rockets, but now we got now we got this. Yeah. And now we got this guy. And then and, then and it's just a business. It's just a, it just has to be a really big business. And they built they built the rock. Wow. Like they were putting all those movies like Walking Tall and all. That yeah. Shit, those were WWF films. Yeah, bruh. <laughs> yes 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 wait you're kidding no that's what... i actually had no idea yes like that was all like if you look at the end of it i'm gonna make sure it was walking tall i'm pretty sure that was one of the ones but yeah that's a wwf film i'm like 99 <laughs> oh my God. because they were they their that's... whole plan was to build to build Dwayne yeah. Johnson. like and they i didn't it. know that though that makes too much sense. Right. They were like, we got this thing and now we can make him bigger. And it's crazy. Even when he comes back to like show face and like walk in. The oh, bro. Arena. Now he's on the board of the company that owns that. So he's you like, think they do the same thing for John Cena? Yeah. Well, yeah, they did. And like, uh, what's that guy's name? I just was watching. I just was watching this shit. Uh, what's his name? Hold on. I got it. I got it. Uh, uh, buff dude. Not Brock Lesnar. Batista. Oh, but t wait. Uh, he was in uh he was in this M. Oh, I know Shyamalan what you're talking about. Genre. He was in the onion Some, shit too. The uh, glass onion. Yes, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was. He was in uh something about like, the cabin in the woods or something like knock on the knock on the woods. There's a movie about like he comes in and like there's this family and like because he has to save the world, it's like I have to kill one of you guys. It's a M. Night Shyamalan like psychological oh, thriller. Wait, I think it I've came seen out this. Yeah, yeah. Like, last year, 2022. It's pretty good too. Okay. I saw it like a few months ago. But I was like, man, these one you know it's crazy too. You know, people are like, oh, WWE is fake, WWF is fake. We went to a, a, a WWE like event, and you know, I used to watch when I was younger, but I, I don't as much now. Uh huh. And I just thought it was so interesting because we walk in, and you know, at first you're just like, oh yeah, like you know, this giving this is WWE, the, right? Yeah. But as you sit there in the crowd and you look at how many people are there, and and you know, Bad Bunny's even there, and he's on wrestling and right. stuff. And I'm tapping my homie like, yo, so what's the deal? Why is Bad Bunny? Fighting this guy. Well, last year at Slam Fest, you know, yeah, yada, yada. 
I was like, you the know what narrative. this is? It's all it is is a movie. We don't watch a movie and go, oh, that's fake. He ain't, that's not really his girl. Right. Oh, that's fake. That he's not really driving that car. We don't do that. We watch it for what it is. Yes. We buy in. Because I can easily be like, man, we know how that scene was shot. Man, you know he ain't shoot him. He ain't right. really did. Why would you do that? You'd ruin it. Just don't. <laughs> Just so you don't. you know, you don't even you don't even think that way. So when I was there, I like had this kind of like eye-opening experience where I'm like, no, if you buy in, bro, this is one of the coolest mm -hmm. things, bro. This is this is mo like movies, action figure, and a storyline and a plot line. Yeah. Every Monday, this is a show that's been running forever. And if you look at it like that, instead of like, oh yeah, he's not really hitting him. Bro, you have a different respect for it. You can do that for all of television. Yeah, that, that <laughs> you, is very true. You can't just watch it, yeah. Well, it's also people understanding that certain content is made to fit a certain purpose. Yeah. Like, I can't be angry that there's, you know, reality shows. There's, you know, housewives and blah, blah. Because that's for, there, there's somebody who that's for. Now, I don't have to partake. But that's yeah. for somebody, you know? And, and if it's being the best housewife show it can yeah. be, that's what that is. I'll say this too. To your point, if you buy in, though, they're not that bad. I was dealing <laughs> with this one girl. It. And basically, we watch a lot of baddies, bad, bad girls club, bad okay. boys club, <laughs> uh, all this, right? So when I first walk, you know, a couple of times I'm watching it, whatever, you know, I'm looking up and down, like, I don't really care what's on TV. Then they get you. And then, but the thing is, though, I'd be like, man, it's so crazy. Every single time, like, they always go to dinner together, sit down, and then they end up fighting. It's like somebody's kind of telling them to do that or putting something in their ear. Yes. And she was like, bro, just watch it. Mm. And I was like, honestly, you're right. Because she was like, you're ruining my show. <laughs> because I'm like, Erica and her just fought and she called her a bitch, so they're not cool. So anymore. why are they sitting down? If that's, no if that's what she wants to watch. Right. And it makes, and once you buy it, you're like, oh shit, though, that fighting is real. Because that's, <laughs> she really bleeds. So <laughs> you just, <laughs> we know that they've been a fight. But like, if you're going to watch a show, or like even like a cartoon or something. It's right. not like you're just sitting there like, oh yeah, SpongeBob is weak because like can't nobody breathe underwater. Like, who would say that? You know, like, why are of course we that's doing on a different this? level, but yeah. you know, it's that's for everything. That's how I feel with Bojack. Like I love Bojack. Okay, Horses. I haven't seen that by the way, but oh, I heard it's great. Great show. Uh, hey, the first three seasons, three four seasons are great. Then okay, it gets a little weird. Okay. But uh, <laughs> Bojack Horseman, people, it's weird. It's like he's a horse, but then like he. Dates people, he dates cats, he dates the cats or people. Pe okay. It's very interchangeable, but okay. you just let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. But I know some people who are like, this doesn't make sense. Like, why isn't everybody just a it's for us cartoon, it's, bro? It's a cartoon, just bro. watch it. <laughs> big, I love cartoons, though, because you can get bigger ideas out yeah. that you can't always get with people because we're, you know, people. We're, 100%. We're very tribal creatures. Yeah. Like, you know, so we don't always get along with everybody. So we might not. Get a message if it's being uh, pervaded by somebody so, that we don't connect with. Relate to. Yes. Absolutely. Whereas like The Simpsons, everyone's yellow. I'm yes. cool with that. Cool with that. And I'm actually, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite, Rick and Morty, bro. Yeah, facts. Rick and Morty yeah. so conceptually brilliant. Mm -hmm. And just the nuances of, yes, it's funny, but also you can see the relationships between uh, father and son, like yeah. the wife and... You know, and Jerry and and the type of insecurities he has, regardless of if it's funny, it's like this is an insecure husband. And this about is his how wife he and his family. And mm -hmm. this is, you know what I'm saying? And a grandfather who never really liked his his daughter's husband. Yeah. You know, just little stuff where like this is an actual like even though they're flying through dimensions and doing all these escapades, yeah. it's reality in this that I can attach to because I'm not watching something that I'm like, nah, I don't believe him. That's, I already don't believe it, so I believe everything. There you go. And yeah. that's the key to the content I like. Mm -hmm. I've never been big into su like superhero, superpower type stuff, like supernatural stuff mm -hmm. I've never been big on. But I noticed I can buy in if the, the grounded story is there. So, for, for example, like the first Spider-Mans. Okay. Bro, the 2000 okay. Spider-Mans? With like, Toby. Yeah, that story, that at, man. Like even the <clears throat> fucking when he, Uncle Ben trying to explain, like you not going and saving Uncle Ben, yeah. and then Uncle Ben died. And, that, yeah. Oh, like man, and then <laughs> you know you could have stopped the guy, but you know with great power comes great responsibility. responsibility. And like, Little oh, shoot, that's like wow. This he's a real person. He's a real person. To get the suit and all that stuff. Like these are real things. Do you watch the boys? 
everyone tells me to watch the boys. Based upon what you're saying, I just assumed you watched the boys, bro. I have to. I got to give it a shot. If that's what you just described, like, okay, like, if I can fuck with a superhero thing yeah. that has this reality to it. When I tell you The Boys is probably one of the best shows on TV, and it's a superhero show, of course. Yeah. But when you watch it, bro, you'll see what I mean But when I say it's not. Yeah, they say they're like the anti-superhero. It's kind of like how real life is. It's kind of like, imagine, like, how the industry is as an actor, uh-huh. but I happen to be a superhero. So basically, I still have an agent. <laughs> I, I'm doing commercials. I'm doing stuff. They're feeding me propaganda. They're making me do certain stuff so it looks good for my image. Right. I'm also saving the Who am I saving? No, don't go save those kids. Let those kids die because oh, we need this. And I we're like gonna catch that. that. Yeah. It's like, okay. and it's obviously way more intricate than this. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have favorite people. Mm-hmm. But I'll say it's so, I'll give you this because I don't want to give any spoilers. The show is so good. I feel like your your favorite character is going to be the villain. Okay, got because you. morally you're like, I know his storyline. Even though he's the most evil fucker, mm-hmm. like literally he does terrible things. Right. It didn't come from nowhere, and you follow that story. Okay. And then it, it, you know, I don't want to give any more. No, no. That's, I'm telling you, you're gonna like this. That's show. my no. Those are my kind of shows. Like I, I always usually like. I only like the villain. Usually, mm-hmm. but I only like the villain when the villain, you can see his origin story. So, yes. did you watch uh, Better Call Saul? I didn't watch Better Call Saul. I, just my Breaking transition Bad. period was weird with that. I watched Breaking Bad first two seasons, but I was in college at Arizona, and I ah. watched it with a group of people. Summer happened. I transferred to SC. I just never watched, watched it, again, it again, bro. Yeah, that and was I've been, since then, since I was, that was 19, I was 19. Yeah. For 11 years. <laughs> I've been trying to finish Breaking Bad. Okay. And then I know that I'd have, then, then after, niggas who watch that watch Better Call Saul, they're like, honestly, that might even be better than Breaking it Bad. It is to me, but the reason being is because you see exactly what you're saying. Yeah. You see why Saul is the dirtbag. The way that he is. And then you go, damn, man. I want you to win. It's same with the kind of with the Sopranos. Same with like, yeah. I what are what are your favorite shows that you? Wow, you like? that, man. this is okay. So I'll say this: I'm more of like a movie guy. Okay, okay. You want like, to go on I the journey, and be stu- done. do and, and study movies now. Keep my, I watch a lot a lot of television, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Severance. I loved Severance. Ooh, that was so such. Good. I'm waiting on season two. Yes. Um, I watch stuff that like. I watched like a lot of limited series as well. Okay. Um, I just got done watching Griselda. I didn't think that that was that good though. But okay. I, I, I think you're right though. Even though I never put a, a kind of like phrase to this, I do like starting the story and like being able to finish it. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, with television, you have to really buy in. There's some weeks you're like, "Fuck, I missed it." And now I gotta catch up. Catch Wait, that. I don't feel like catching up because I don't have three hours real quick. Okay, one day I might. Okay, actually, right. I'm trying to play 2K right now. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, I just got Hogwarts Legacy. Let me get on. But yes, Thank I'm really like, I'm really a movie guy. I think it's because at the end of the day, like the, my goal is like I want to be a movie star. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. So like I study, like when I'm, I'm watching movies over and over and over again, and like you know, I mean, you probably do the same exact thing where it's like, okay, I've seen this movie so many times. When Robert De Niro's talking, I'm not looking at him anymore. I'm looking at Joe Pesci. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. looking at, why did they do the lighting right there in Chinatown when he sits right there? And like, because you see all, niggas set up lights for a reason. Right. When a nigga walks into a building and it's dim or if it's bright, that was on purpose. Right. Even if we don't care or whatever, mm-hmm. it set the mood, it set the tone, it set whatever they wanted it to set. Mm-hmm. And you subconsciously get in that mode as a viewer. So I, I I I look at all that. I look at people's responses. Like if you're talking, I look at like how he, is he just like looking at him? Is he kind of waiting for his line? Right. Is he doing a lot? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Is he still? I look at all that. Dude, one of my favorite movies because I'm like a very comedic person. Okay. So people think that like it's some funny movie, bro. It's a movie called The Prestige. Ooh, that is my, my shit, favorite boy. Movie, and it listen, never changes. Listen, that's my favorite movie. Okay, why is that your favorite movie? Okay. And I'll tell you why it's one of my favorite movies. Okay, bet. It's my favorite movie because like, you know, like I was saying with the boys, we're like, yes, it's a superhero movie, but it's not a really, if you really are watching, it's yeah, not about magic. that. So yes, yeah. Prestige is about two magicians, but it's not. It's about the ego of man and what, as a man, 
when you kind of put your mind to something, whether it's good or bad, right. you know, if I want to kill somebody, if I want to get this, whatever, if you really want something, you will literally stop at nothing. And sometimes it's dangerous uh -huh. because your ego will take you on journeys that you never thought that you were going to be on, be in. And guess what? And another moral is that like, and you still might not even win at the end. Because you lost maybe a part of yourself, even if you do win. You lost a part of yourself. And, that, and that's a well, great you don't way even to wrap know that who up. You are anymore yeah. without well, me giving spoilers. <laughs> okay, you know, you know, damn. And so, like, so, niggas be like, okay, watch Prestige, and they look at the little synopsis of like two magicians, and I'm like, bro, it's not. Don't even look at that. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, don't even look at that. Like, it's bro. funny because what you said was. And also, real quick, sorry, okay, not to but also how like old niggas and like parents like are always right. You know how like Michael Caine's like his character. Yes. You yes. know, like the whole entire time. He actually, they take you on this journey where unlike a lot of whodunits, at the end of the whodunit, you kind of see a montage of stuff and you're like, oh, I get it. That's why he's the person who right. I didn't guess, right? Right. Prestige is different because they don't do a montage. They just show you scenes you already looked at, but you weren't even focusing on the truth. Like they'll show the montage, and I'm like, I remember that scene. Right. I remember when she was like, "You love me," and he's like, "Not today." And I was like, "What the what fuck does that mean?" Yeah. And at the end, they show the exact scene you saw, and you see it from a different lens. And I was like, "This now, this is Th art. this is art." Yes. No. So this is art. That exact thing. So my favorite scene. And maybe it's the way you said it was so. It was it's so actually probably how I need to look at it. Man. But I love movies, just like The Prestige mm -hmm. and like No Country for Old Men. All this I love movies where people will go to any end to get what they want. Yes. So when they see uh, the Chinese guy walking out, mm -hmm. and they're like, "What's the trick?" And he goes, "This is the trick." He lives the trick. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes, that is what it takes. That is what it fucking takes. Yes. But now what you added was, yeah, the ego of man is really, oh, uh, shit, yeah. You got to be careful of how far you take that. Yeah. Because, man, like even oh, with the brothers, Bro. with the, oh, with the, ah. And like, but they I, were honestly, the I'll, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. For the podcast, if you guys are watching, I might give spoilers right now, so if you want to skip or whatever, skip just whatever, the next minute maybe. But it, this is—it's just a good lesson, especially like in art, for real, man. Like in that movie, like obviously, even like you know, Hugh Jackman is going through great lengths where he'll even send his girl to go spy, and then that backfires on him. Yeah, he still doesn't get the lesson. He's like, okay, fuck it, I'm gonna go talk to Tesla. <laughs> Tesla's like, bro, I'll get it to you, but do not do this shit. Even Michael Caine, Michael Caine, and at the end, after I've seen The Prestige so many times, yeah. I, also as an actor, obviously, you look at these performances and you're like, man, Christian Bale, like all man, these, Scarlett Johansson, like you guys are good. But it's one of those things where like, too, when you're younger and your mom says something, your dad says something, and like, like you don't know what the fuck you talking about. Even though I don't know why we thought that when we were younger, of course they know what they're talking about. They've experienced like, Yeah, and we're like, you still don't know though. And when you get older, you catch yourself like, damn, like my mom, my mom Ben said he wasn't. My mom told me about friends I had when I was eleven, Ooh. and I, I'll tell her she be like, I told you twenty years ago, that like, yeah, I, I didn't trust him. I'm like, how'd you know? It's just like I just been through it. So, at the beginning of the movie, Michael Caine's like, it's a bloody double, uh, and we're like, yeah, double, but how you? <laughs> Right, You're like, right. you didn't think that, though. Yeah. Because I'm like, no, it's not. Because then they go get that he goofy was, motherfucker yeah. for his name, and you're like, nah, it ain't that. Bro, he was using a double the yeah. whole time. It just wasn't what you thought a double is. But the old nigga was right the whole time, and they're like, shut up, old man, you old hag, whatever. Yeah. Right the whole entire time. Damn. Also, uh, crazy, I found this out the other day. When he go gets the goofy uh, Hugh Jackman, Yeah. that's Hugh Jackman. Yeah, 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 I knew that. I... Man, I didn't know that until maybe a year ago because I was like, he looks too much like Hugh Jackman. But That's why I figured. they did his, just a little, uh, and they did the, the, teeth. the teeth a little. Yeah. And he did a great performance too. Like, man, of playing I some like, I have to slightly not be myself and like, bro, I was, I didn't know. I thought that I was actually like another person. Uh, yeah. Never like looked it up and stuff, but. No, and I love that that Hugh Jackman's kind of like a David Ruffin. Like he's getting like <laughs> fucked up and then showing up and like, 
boom, and I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Next time, maybe. And like, he's just fucking his whole shit up, bro. But nah. two, and then that even showed you two people who aren't on the same page the way that the other two were. But yes. you're still chasing it. But you st- and, still, and you, bro, and t- to the ending. So it's one of those endings where. Even every single time I, I might watch this shit tonight. Yeah, I don't blame even you. every single time you still don't actually know how it ends. Because for me, it's like what you do know, and the only good part about the movie is you do know that even though he locks that nigga up for life and mm-hmm. sentences him to death, you know that the guy who's actually on the outside of jail, the brother, mm-hmm. he actually can still be with his daughter. The nigga who's in jail, that's not, that's his, not daughter, his daughter. But the nigga from the outside. That is so. That's the only good thing. That like, right. okay, he can at least be with his daughter. This movie isn't that sick. Where he put this nigga in jail for no, no reason, reason and then did this. But even the fact that like you know he even like has this monologue, Hugh Jackman about like I like I didn't really win basically because like I still don't even know like is it me coming out the box or me drowning? Yeah. And he doesn't know now when you're cloning. You know it's a psychological like you know if you, if you were to I guess I don't I haven't ever cloned anything <laughs> Never cloned but if you were to clone me I'm sure the clone I learned this from Rick and Morty yeah. has the same stream of consciousness as well yeah. so if you were to get cloned you wouldn't know if you were or not because well, you have the same conscience but you, but then again your thought would probably be right like if you cloned yourself your thought would probably be oh I'm about to clone myself then you clone yourself so that stream of consciousness the clone knows well I was about to clone myself I started doing it if it and sees I'm you, I'm here. Yes. Okay. Or did when that shit happened, did I drop down there and drop? I feel it all. I still feel all the emotions yes. and death you and feel everything. Drowning. Yes. And that's. Ugh. Yes. And then what's crazy is, is that other callback. Man, I'm just giving. This is so. Funny but it's bad. But Michael can be right, and he tells a story at the beginning when he was talking about like I knew this one guy, and uh, and he said like. Uh, he had asked him like how does it feel like to drown and he was like it felt like euphoria or whatever yeah i gotta and then at the end of the movie he goes back he was like i lied i lied lied. yeah agony and you could tell it hit him because he's like i go through that all the time like the old nigga's always right even if you don't know what's going on i know what's going on because i've been through this and going back to what you were saying your mom being able to tell because i've noticed that with my parents they Mm -hmm. just know yeah and but i've realized too the archetypes of people don't really change. Okay. In every era, we can go all the way back to the 1700s, 1600s, okay. 1200. There's a nigga out here trying to sell your wares. There's always going to be that guy. There's always going to be just like solid human beings. Yeah. Then there's always going to be people just trying to get over. Yeah. There's going to be lazy people. Yeah. There's going to be right. people who are mischievous. They're just mischievous with whatever the time mm-hmm. is. You know, yeah. it's it's a thing. You opportunists. There's yes. always been yes. opportunists, moochers, and yeah, <laughs> backstabbers. All that. You're right. All that, and you can see it. Probably, I think our parents, active parents. You know, obviously, like when they're paying attention, they notice from a kids' mm-hmm. parents because they have conversations we don't have. Yeah. So they see even how they how that kids. Uh, how that kid's parents' bills are paid, yeah. how they move around, what kind of things yeah. we would never notice. Yeah. Anything. Wow. Because why would we? Why would we? Then we're like, he cool. He blah, blah, blah. But then parents pay attention to even how the kid moves. And yeah. then, oh, the kid be doing the same thing the mama be doing. And that ain't right. About and that right. ain't right. And I don't trust her. So he going. Yep. And then 11 years That's later, funny. you're like. And we're like, we don't even yeah. know what you're talking about. But I seen it, son. Yeah, I seen it. <laughs> I know what's going on. Or like all those times when we were younger and your mom asked you something. And she only asked you because she already know the answer. <laughs> I told you, son, don't lie to me. I told you not to leave this house last night. Where'd you go last night? Mom, I didn't. And you know and you know it's bad when she goes, now I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Why you? That has to feel. You lying to me. You lying. And, you, and I'm still lying too. I'm like, and I know once she said, I'm going to ask you one more time, Jordan. I'm like, damn, she, I've been figured out. But I can't go outside because I'm going to get in trouble anyway. <laughs> nah, 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 I wasn't there. <laughs> well, who is this? I've seen this picture. You don't know who I know. Now I'm in trouble. I'm like, wow, bro, this is crazy. You know everything. Yeah. Everything. Or just from living. Sometimes I'll call my mom and just from my tone of voice, she'll be like, what's wrong? I'm like, how did you know? I just know you, son. I'm also grown. 
I've been right. through everything. I've seen everything. Yes. <laughs> you you can't really get it. Yeah. The plays you learned five years ago, I've known for the I've last known. 25, old. 30 years. That's old, <laughs> That's old bro. I even do that now. Like with my little cousins and stuff, they'll call me for advice. And I'll say, first of all, I'll give them advice. But then second of all, I'll be like, and just so you know, even though you're living this and it's going to be, you know, this is very easier said than done because the reason why we didn't believe our parents because we hadn't experienced it yet. So all we know is what we know. We don't know what's to come. So as far as I know, literally the phrase, yeah. as far as I know, right? fuck you, you're wrong. <laughs> I got this. Yeah. But, but as far as I know, I'm farther than you in what we know. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to my cousins, I'll be like, this is what it is. But just so you know, none of this matters. <laughs> right, and I need you. I know you're stressed over who you, you know, this guy <laughs> likes you. You're 16 and right. all this, but I promise you, in eight years, you're not going to care about this. at all. You might not remember his name, and you might not at all. You're not. You're gonna be. You're actually gonna look back and be like, I did that. I promise you. I also promise you that this will that this is gonna happen. <laughs> but how do you know? Because right now, I'm feeling I gotta. So I don't I don't try to downplay it because you go through what but you go that's through. That's most feelings. But I'm like to make you feel better though. Mm -hmm. I can promise you. My mom always says this. She was like, if you ever think about something, are you down? You think about like, is it gonna matter ten years from now? Probably not. Probably not. So don't worry. Of course, you know it's easier said than done, but don't harbor on it too much. Also, I always like to think too. When's the last time you had a bad ten year stretch? <laughs> you feel me like nigga when is the last time things were a just third of my life it was just fucked it was just <laughs> fucked up everything like mind you some people have man but odds are odds are if you're out here just trying to be a good person that's yeah, not gonna like at most three to four mm, years yeah. and then usually so something changes or some good things happen within that time like yeah it's not just fucked up every day yeah, you know what I mean not. like it's even if a couple months is bad or yeah. whatever the case is. I mean, I don't even feel that way because I feel like no matter what experience you go through as a human being, I mean, you can always see the good parts, I feel like, in everything. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to go to the lengths of like, okay, I'm going to compare myself to the worst a person I don't want to be. And then you kind of get happy because <laughs> it's like, true. even though I've been going through this stretch or whatever and it feels like I'm struggling, it could always be worse. Facts. It can always, always be. Mike Epps was talking about this. He could be like, if you, if everybody was ten people in the room, right, mm -hmm. and whatever problems you want to get rid of, if everybody dropped their problems on Ooh. the floor and ready, set, go, and you could pick up whatever problem you want instead of yours, you are gonna sit back and you are gonna pick up a problem. Be like, damn, I'd rather have my shit. I'd rather have my problem. Oh, man, that's some real shit. I don't want that problem. This nigga got one leg. I'm cool. I'm you know cool. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I could, I could figure this out. Like, damn, yeah. I can figure these bills out, low key. Damn, do I want to miss a leg? Mm. Yeah. Or or the things even you can't see. Like yeah. those are some of the things I think about too. It's like, man, there's there's somebody who you and we all got somebody mm -hmm. when you see on social media or doing something, we're like, damn. Man, that that motherfucker's doing it. That would be man, awesome if I I'm had so one. Over that, but though. no. But, <laughs> it used to be like that. Well, so I so don't because you realize. I yeah, I literally yeah. realized. It's like, oh, you know what? Things aren't as sweet as you think for most people. Man. At all. Because you're not going to be like, today's a good day to post. Man, shit, I was really going through something today. Let's post this and tell everybody that I had a really shitty day. Right. Not one person does that. No, they don't. Not one person does that. And the person you know, who, does who does do that, that is, is really doing attention. it for views and yes. attention. <laughs> that is very or like true. People like crying on stories. I'm yeah. like, so wait a minute. I'm not trying to negate the fact that maybe a dog passed away or whatever. But if that really happened, the fact that you were like, let me pull on. Cause you yeah. gotta, I always think about like behind it. It's like you really flicked up. Flicked up, yeah. Scrolled over, clicked the app, went to story or page, did that and continued crying for the world to see. And then you know what you did? Then you press stop. Then you checked the gate. You yes. edited it. Edited the <laughs> shit. Put the words on it. Added put it music. on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. You're doing this. You're doing this for views, and like, it's okay to have content for views, but I don't believe in that though. That's like, it. I'm on here crying on the gram, and that's okay to not cry on the gram. It's okay to post only good things on the gram, but you do have to realize that on Instagram is only highlights. Yes, yeah, it's literally. only highlights. Mm -hmm. Like, like we said, unless you do have views. But it's why? Why would I? Yeah. Why would I tell you guys I'm going through everything? Why? 
It's also like, let's be real, it's like a persona to keep up, you know? It's your, it's the modern day card. Yes. It's, hey, what are you about? I could talk to you, but I'm going to just go look at your profile and say, ooh, you look like you do cool shit. You on TV? I like this. Ooh, he got a blue check. <laughs> this is, this, it's just funny, though, when you break it down, because this yeah. is what we do. But back in the day, it was like, a, hey, you have a card? It's like, oh, he's a professional. Yeah. He's got the... Uh, the you and know. you go to his office, you're like, oh, shit. This <laughs> exactly. thing is not all put together. <laughs> no, just think back in the day. When you got a card, if you didn't know the city that well, mm -hmm. well, you just, oh, he has an address. <laughs> like, there was no Google Maps. Like, nigga, if you just had like, where this shit is. Yeah, no. That's so crazy, too. I, you know, it's so funny. I had a conversation um, with my mom the other day when I was younger going to basketball tournaments and stuff, and MapQuest was out. And, oh, and, printing and, out the. And I was not in trouble, but like, I had to stay on it. And sometimes I'm doing shit with Jordan. And I'm thinking right now, I'm like, bro. If you told me to even pull up here, right? right. And I know LA. <laughs> and I missed a turn or missed a freeway exit. Oh, yeah. I'd be cooked. I'm like, all right, what? I, all, all I know is how to get back home. Because <laughs> I already missed the exit when I exit right. off and get back on what is, and now everything, all the directions are switched and. I'll be lost. I don't know. Even just say, but then keep in mind, I'm talking about MapQuest. Yeah, oh, yeah. It wasn't Map telling Quest. you live. Imagine before MapQuest. Oh yeah, you had the Thomas niggas even Thomas Guide. I don't even know what that is. Okay, so the, what this, is the Thomas Guide? This thing is like a little booklet. It was called a Thomas Guide. Okay, and it would have like the name of the streets you had, and they had one for every city. Okay, and you needed to kind of carry that around, and so that you could look at, oh, I'm here, and then I need to go. It's just mini maps. A mini more specific map. Okay. Yeah, but it was really map reading. Yeah, okay. like you couldn't just be like, "Oh, I'm gonna type in my address and go." It was like, "No, it's over here." That's where it's. That's why motherfuckers used to say things like, "Oh, it's I'm off of blah 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 and blah blah blah." Yeah, because you needed. I used to back in the day. It was like, "Look, you gonna come down and buy that McDonald's? You are gonna hit a right, yeah, and then you are gonna see a house with a trash can right there. That should be to your left, right there. You make a slick U turn, right? A slick and when you see that Dollar General on your right on the left." You'll see two cats fucking, and then we, you walk past that gate, and they go to back house, and now you're there. And if you hit the fire hydrant, you walk too far. <laughs> uh, don't don't forget about that too. And that look, and if you hit this, you don't go too far. It was actually very specific. Those are good directions. Very good random like, directions. That's the fire hydrant. Here go the cats. Okay, I think um <laughs> this the door. And then Put the address. And then not only that, then you had to go knock on people's. Because here's another thing: you couldn't just like say you missed an exit. You mm -hmm. couldn't just text me and be like, yo, bro, hey, my bad. I just, no, it's just like, well, nigga, nigga last time late. we spoke was. Last time we spoke last night. You said you was going to be here at four. We just go, that's so funny, even even coming here today. Yeah. Because I didn't respond this morning and you in your head was like, because, you know, technology. Yeah. You didn't text. We just going to schedule another yeah, time. Day? This is like the old days where it was like, I told that nigga last time I'll be here on this day. Two weeks ago, at this time, pulled up. Hey, no hey, communication. Just hey, here real one, because he was here. I, I said, mean, was here, bro, I, I understand. I was like, I, I understand how it go. I was like, if you, if you're not, he was like, oh, you're not even here right now. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, respect. But I felt bad. I'm like, I can't believe I didn't text this nigga. Like, nah, yeah. I didn't text this nigga. Nothing. Didn't. But I was here. I, I, was, I, was, I was here. here. I, was I was outside, outside too. <laughs> That's all. Like, That's funny. You, bro. you grew up here. Born I did. I was born in Dallas. My whole family lives in Dallas. Um, but I, I'm from LA. Okay. You know, I grew up in Ladera Heights. Oh, where? Inglewood. Where? My mom's in Inglewood. I went to. Uh, you grew up here? No, no, Chicago. Okay. Oh, duh. Yeah. Wait, I know that, bro. Yeah. I already knew that. That was stupid. We can edit <laughs> so that I out. Knew that. I was like, that's <laughs> what I actually knew exactly that. Hey, man. Um, Shy City. But I, um, yeah, I, I grew up in LA. I went to all like schools. I went to SC. Oh, I went to well, right. Yeah. So it's like, even my Dallas family is like. You're not from Dallas, bro. That's, That's cool. hilarious. Yeah. So. At, at this point, I would say, because I've been here now... 14 years mm -hmm. you start to just get real la like yeah i mean that's that's real but you know you know the difference between you and a lot of other people is that you know what i hear a lot is like when people are like fake or people do certain shit people be like that's the la shit that's right. the la shit that is, yeah. and as a nigga like, i feel like you have to live here for a while and kind of be in this industry to realize 
They're like, no, that's not no L.A. shit. Mm -hmm. That's niggas who've been out here for a year thinking that's L.A. shit. So the way that you think and people are like, nah, chill. Exactly. And you're like, oh, these niggas are prude and stuck up. It's like, no, you're the L.A. nigga that people talk about. Well, yeah, because you're the LA's asshole. so fake. It's like, no, you didn't meet a real L.A. nigga. Yeah, no, you're the asshole who came from wherever the fuck you're <laughs> yeah. from. And, and think, then you came out here thinking. Hollywood. Yeah, no. And I'm telling people, yeah, I've been out here. Like, I live in L.A. Like, I'm from L.A. It's like, nah, no. you're not, bro. The like, coolest really people, not. some of the coolest people I know, born and raised yeah. in L.A. Because they're used to the shit. It's yeah. like niggas who ain't used to nothing. It's like. Yes. But claiming that they are. Yes. And it's like, oh, them, them niggas who are used to shit, them niggas don't act right. It's like, no, they're really not, though. They're just claiming they are. <laughs> they're the really not. actually are, you wouldn't even know because they don't care. Facts. I'm That's like, man, true. like, yeah, but. Yeah, LA has a very, I mean, also this industry brings out a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting <laughs> lot of characters. Everything. Yeah. Yes. We, well, we were talking about this. This is a nice time to get back to mm -hmm. it. When we were first starting, we were talking about just how you were saying acting isn't the same industry like people what, what, what were you saying it was like oh I, well i was it's not saying, as cool it's not as, as cool bro. yeah but i think it's you know it's because like i love acting yeah. obviously like i enjoy it i love bringing a character to life and impacting lives however yeah. it may be but when it comes to and like, like i said i was talking about this with brett gray if you guys know who brett gray is but how like acting is just not as lit as everything else. That's and I can give you an example mm -hmm. of like, you know, like what's cool about Bel Air and stuff is like I'm in all these rooms where like now I see a whole bunch of celebrities and stuff like that. But right. like I see a lot of celebrity like actors and rappers right. and musicians. Mm -hmm. and, and let's just be quite frank, right? Mm -hmm. When you are a musician, people kind of know you for who you are. Who you, you are, know, not some saying? character. Exactly. So it's cool that it's like, yo, that's jazz, that's jazz, that's jazz. But I can't wait till... I get to the point where like that's Jordan L. Jones, Trust but me, for me, because I don't do music, that is I gotta do way more shit. Right. I don't do anything where I don't play a character. Right. right. So like that's cool and everything, but we're not calling you know Denzel Alonzo or like Frank <laughs> Lucas, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? Not, yes. But he put in that work to be to like be that. It's probably his first thing ever. They probably did that, but like that's where I'm on. Sure. With music, you kind of make your name for yourself. You create your own content that if mm -hmm. people fuck with it, they're automatically just attached to you yeah. because they're like, oh, this guy came up with this on his own. This is what he goes through and I go through it. I feel like we're here. Right. You know, yeah. that's how I feel and you did it. So now whenever I just see you, not the production company, not the show that not you're the on, label, that's just it, yeah. you and your name, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Another thing when it comes to fashion, right? A lot of, it depends on how big you are, yeah. you know? But a lot of musicians are the ones, when you watching fashion shows, like, who at the fashion show? Right. Of course, Kanye, but he does fashion. But, like, but I Offset. Yeah. <laughs> and Cardi yeah. B and Ice Spice and Beyonce and all these, and Pharrell is with Louis Vuitton Right, now. right, right. And, you know, but, but you know, Michael B. Jordan's not. And that's not, like, a diss or anything. No, I'm just saying that, like... He had the little coach play, but I see what you're saying. They look... I'm talking, no, I'm not talking about also like wearing, I'm talking about like even designing uh, because I feel like as a musician, it's like, man, I'm already in the creative space for myself, how I want to be perceived. Right. Oh, you can do that with clothing. Okay. This is what people will wear. And I came up with this. Oh my God. He made that. I see what you're saying. You know? So that's how I just feel like the rooms and stuff and even like the parties and stuff. And keep in mind, I go to a lot of lit shit, like, of course. Yeah. But like, I feel like, because an actor, how we are viewed is like, like I'm an actor. No, and, and that's just what I was going to say. Okay. The thing is, <laughs> as a... Wait, don't talk to me. I'm prepared. Yeah, as a guy who's never subscribed to that. Yeah. That is... Me either, by the way. Yeah, no, Not I yet. I, I haven't done a role no, but where this it's is, like... But I'm... this is the... <laughs> why people... This is why you don't see that. Yeah. Because A, a lot of the people who could just walk their way into those rooms, like who are really all the way up there. Oh, I want to be at the fashion thing. I want to buy a lot. Mm -hmm. They're not those people. Yeah. They're not those people. And then also because of how this industry is, how the acting industry is, a lot of people are just like, you know, they don't know where they're supposed to stand or how they're supposed to view things or how yeah. they're supposed 
because niggas want to keep their jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, hey, hey, hey. He said, I'm one of them. That's, that's one of the main things. No, I, I, I can't be it. on Instagram just doing whatever because if you're a musician, they can't cancel you as long as y'all still fuck with my music. Music. I I'll, can. Kanye says the craziest shit ever. Can't cancel you. We can't can but we, you know? but we can take you off of our shit. Yeah, our and, shit. Yeah, but yeah. we can't make blow you yeah. off the face of the earth because yeah. you are known for being on our shit. Our so shit. once we stop putting, you can't stop me from. Kodak Black, NBA Youngboy, all these, keep in mind, these are all artists that I listen to. Yeah, right. Well, regardless of who Kevin Gates, like, regardless of who don't fuck with what they say or what opinions they have, they yeah. still got their fan base and make their money based upon their fan base. They don't care about the people you who You Ja Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. that's, the, that's the difference. Yeah, Ja. Yeah, Ja. Yeah, Ja. Except the opposite. <laughs> and the NBA was like, you're fucking up because we know we can't get rid of you, bro. So can you just and stop? his name on the back of the jersey? Yes. that'd be the difference too. Like, like that's Ja Morant. He got his own. <laughs> we know shoe. his name. Yeah. See, yeah, it's that's partially why I do all the things that I do and try to. Because I, I'm sure, and you noticed this for sure. Like, it's not as lit as it was, and and yeah. partially because not only musicians, musicians is one place, but also like. There's people who like don't technically have a skill, and people will go watch them. Yeah, not they, <laughs> there's motherfuckers who won't watch a whole show, but they'll make sure they catch this one motherfucker who posts a reel every yes. day. Yes, so yes, I, I think that's the <laughs> other piece of it. I think we need to have more, and this is kind of how what I am trying to the kind of artist I'm trying to be as far mm -hmm. as like from film to music. Need more people who are kind of like building this is where in uh independence and having uh ownership comes yeah. in. It's like who can wear all these different hats and do all these things yeah. and not feel like they can't be themselves because yeah. they'll get whether it's canceled or yeah. what and like I said, it's not even canceled, it's more of like you don't know how when you're taking these bold chances you're yeah. talking about. I want to do this, I want to blah blah blah. Sometimes a little too much momentum, especially in the acting world, and I'm sure you've noticed this, mm -hmm. can be viewed as a threat. Oh, yeah. And they, and they don't always like that, which is also a... Uh, but what's always pissed me off about that is if that's how they feel about it, it's a spit in the face when someone who does that job has momentum. Yeah. But then y'all will go hire the nigga who doesn't do that job who already has the momentum. Yes. <laughs> so we'll go. So, yeah, you got momentum and it's like, ah, I don't know. You know, Jordan does a lot of blah, blah, blah. Da, da. But then it'll be some nigga who's straight off of TikTok and it'll be like, oh, no, but we'll get him. Yeah. Wait, but this is a real actor who and has he can't the even act, you know, but because he's on TikTok. And that's kind of like the space. And like you said, he's got this type of momentum. Mm -hmm. Now, he kind of took a nigga job, <laughs> but he's not a professional actor. No. And also keep in mind, like, I don't I don't dislike the social media, like, influencers. Yeah. Also, my thing is this. I don't really give a fuck what you do. You just got to be good. So my thing is, like, people be like, man, like, you know, social media, like, influencers, like, you know, transgressing to, like, really acting and stuff. I'm like, look, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Once I see it, is it good? Then that's, that's all. Right. I even care about 100%. So, like, or at least, even if the first one ain't good, damn it, I better see some growth in the second one. Cause I, yes. there's people like that. I'll, shit, we're talking about walking tall. That is not the same rock. Not at all. Not at not all. Not the same rock at not all. Not at all. He's actually a good actor. He's a good actor. But also, <laughs> and, and not for, you know, this is not like shade or anything. He doesn't. He's so big too. He like doesn't have to play any roles where he's like so outside of him. Exactly. All his roles are similar, but honestly, that's what I love. It's like Liam Neeson. Me and Mo, me <laughs> and the yeah. homies, we and the homies have this joke, bro, where every single movie he does is called Taken, but you just change the rest of it. So it's like Taken, and then he has this other other show called like something like Ice Road, and we're like, I saw, it's we're just like this taken is Taken in the on Snow. Ice. Taking in the snow, taking in a car, taking on he the lost train. his memory, taking on the train. <laughs> yes. It's the same nigga, but honestly, I'm watching all of them. They're all I good. Love, They're love. all good. But like, why? It's like, this shit works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And shout out, I also feel like, low key, if you ever look at old, have you ever seen like old pictures of Liam Neeson? No. Liam no. Neeson looked like the like cool, like quarterback type back in the day. Like, I feel like he was supposed to get, because you know, he had 
Schindler's List. He's done a lot of yeah. things. I think... Um, I haven't seen that in so long. Yeah, I think he never really got his, like, time. Yeah. And then they started giving him these these movies. It's like, nigga, hey, yeah. you deserve it. <laughs> yeah. Like, just take it. You, you got one with Taken. And bro, fuck it. Bro, let's let's keep writing it up. Look, we're gonna take your family again. So this is a, a young, youngish <laughs> Liam. Oh, that's young Let me Liam. See. There was <laughs> Yeah, Real like like Liam. I would have believed he was kicking ass back then. <laughs> but you know, now now it's like he's 70. Have you ever thought about that? Would you want to be doing all this shit that he's doing? <laughs> at an old age. At an old age. Well, you know what? I'll say yes because what I do for myself. And I always tell people this, like, in certain, like, interviews and stuff, people will be like, you know, like, what would you tell, like, an upcoming actor? Mm -hmm. You know, give some them some advice. And, you know, I can be like, you know, stay in school or whatever the fuck cliche is. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, work hard and don't quit. Like, whatever. But one thing I do always say, and this kind of goes back to the Instagram thing, too, to where it's like, like, First of all, it's not stop looking at Instagram, but no matter what person you look up to or what person you see is popping or whatever, like that's not your journey. You know, mm. that's not for you. Right. And Jimmy Iovine always says this, and it's basically like in a horse race, you know, horses have blinders on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like they don't see like the horses because like they might miss a step or whatever the fuck. And like that's how you should really take life. Because no matter if somebody's like ahead of you right now or behind you, all that shit can change within one decision. Facts. One decision can change your life forever. And now you're the, you know? Yeah. And I would say do that. So going back to your point, that's my advice to people. But perfect example with like Liam Neeson. Also, people have like, first of all, like no memory. Once you're popping, people go like, oh, look at this new guy, Kevin Hart. Right. Kevin Hart was in Paper Soldiers 15, <laughs> right. 16 years that ago. Y'all just never saw it. He was in 40 Old Virgin. He was hilarious, but he was before he was Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. been, uh, been doing sh Viola Davis. He's a sm he was smart tech customer. Bro, man. Kevin what? Hart was Bro, smart, smart tech, tech customer. customer. That's it. One scene, go in there, kill your scene. One day, of, one day of work. One day of work. And, probably, day of and work. probably waited around for hours. Forever, you know, forever. And did that, killed that scene. And at that time, you're probably like, and this is no shade, but the dude he uh, did the scene with. Oh, that guy, I thought he was going to be, bro. right? Yeah. And, not, and he still does stuff, you know. But you wouldn't think the trajectory of Kevin Hart was going to be that way. Viola Davis, I was watching, who was I watching the other day? I was like, damn, I've seen this before, but I didn't know that was, Vi oh, the help. Ah, right. She was in the house. Manny yeah. Octavia Spencer was in that Octavia, as well. Yeah, she won for that one. Okay, yeah, for the help. I oh. think it was yeah, who won. One of them won. One of them for won the for think, the help. Maybe. I, I mean, that, think, that was one of those political movie. movies where she might have. Yeah, <laughs> but bro, no, you want to talk about but Octavia go, Spencer, yeah. nigga, bad Santa. Do you not remember when he pulls up to the motel? Uh, I oh, really got. Last time she I ain't was, shit right for a week. She was in yes. bad Santa. And how long ago? that was? Oh three. And you would think, like, oh, my God, who's this new actress? Who's, uh, <laughs> Crazy. Or Crazy. Viola Davis, like, oh, my God, how to get away with murder? Who's this new actress? This show's so good. It's this new actress, Viola Davis. It's like, bro, you don't know. Academy so, Award Awards. Academy Award for Best Actress in a Supporting Role. And I'm pretty sure that's the hell. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's yeah be real. It's got to be. Yeah, it's <laughs> got to gotta be, be right? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Crazy. So, to go to Liam Neeson and stuff like that. I didn't even you telling me about when he was young. I'm yeah. sure when he was young, he wasn't like popping like that. Now we just he's just a household he's name, a household Liam Neeson. Name. Yeah. So I would, I would enjoy that just to be like the people who be like, "Yo, man, this actor Jordan Jones, he he got this three part movie, right? And like this nigga's popping right now." I was like, "Bro, that nigga was in Bel Air in 2024, bro. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. back in the day, you never saw that. Like no, nah, yeah. like so I would for sure do it because I enjoy those stories. Like yeah. I remember and. That's what I first saw when he did Seriously Funny. Like his, he did um, I'm a Grown Little Man. It was a smaller stand up, but it's one of my favorite stand ups. And yeah. then, like, Seriously Funny, that's when, like, Netflix first got popping, like, took away the DVDs. Yeah. And Seriously Funny was on there. And I'm in my dorm watching it with all my friends. I'm like, You guys watch this new guy, Kevin Hart? And I'm like, New guy? <laughs> but he's new. This is the first time y'all seen him. Yeah. So he's new to y'all. He's been putting in work forever. Bro, they thought Soul Plane was going to do it for him. Forgot about Soul Plane. Thought Soul Plane was going to do it I for him. I forgot. I forgot. And it didn't either. Guess who because else is forget, a soul Guess what? Sophia Vergara. She is in that shit. <laughs> oh, my bro. God. 
That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I see what you mean. Because I'll be looking at niggas, I'll be like, he's and bigger there's people, than... And there's people who watch Griselda. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was I thought it was cool. It wasn't yeah. bad or anything. I just thought it was cool. But watch it, probably think it's really, really good. Right. And it's like, oh, this actress, Sophie, and she kills this role. And she's been in so much shit. So much shit. And I, I just I just like seeing it. It never stops. You never you can always kinda in a way too, like recreate dude, you know who I really love, bro? Uh what's his name? Um uh Abbott Elementary Tyler James Williams. Oh, Tyler James Williams. Bro, man. I, when he did Abbott Elementary, I've been waiting for him to right. do that because he was so good in Everybody Hates Chris, bro. Right. As a kid, bro, it was one of my favorite shows, bro. And he was such a good actor. Then too, he did the walking. I'm not gonna lie. Tyler James Williams, I got always gotta give him his kudos because literally from 09 to like 2014, 15, mm -hmm. Jordan. Every job. <laughs> no, not, no, 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 no. I'm talking about like every job. Like even things like niggas went to test for, mm -hmm. they were testing because he wasn't available. But then when they worked it out with him, then like the test was null and void. Like, okay, got it. He was the guy. Okay, like, and he and mind you did good. Never like you're saying. Yeah, he never did his thing in the Walking yeah. Dead. Did his thing, in, and then comes in the ab, crushes it, dude. Crushes and he's it. just so he's so funny. Yeah, and such a good actor and well cast for that too. I I feel like oh, the dope thing yeah. is he's one of those people who's been fortunate enough too to like. Right, the right roles. Yes, like things that he can. Because yes, it, you know, it's it, sometimes you it's get, hard to do that. It's hard to do that. Sometimes you get roles and you're like, "This is cool. It's not perfect for me." Yeah, but hey, I got it, nigga. I'm gonna show up. And, uh, but no, everything has been very like, ah, uh, like he became the archetype for that kind of role. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. It goes yeah. to him. Yes, so, like, he created his lane. Yes, for why he's needed. <laughs> yes, even just like that, break the fourth wall, like type. <laughs> Yeah. Acting. Yes. Even though he didn't do that and everybody hates Chris, I'm like, yes, bro. You have this that. is the comedy yeah. that we're missing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, and and I, I think also Abbott does a good job of just being really funny and also edgy mm -hmm. because, you know, a lot of stuff. Especially network stuff. Yeah. yeah. You think mm -hmm. that it's going to be a certain way and they're like, nope, can't say that. Nope, can't do that. Nope, can't yeah. do that. Nope, can't act. And I'm like, man. And, you know, I understand people being sensitive to certain subjects. We just live in that day and age now. It is what it is. And you, know? you can't piss off middle America. And you can't. I, like we were just talking about as an actor. Yeah. It's like, mm, I might say this and it's funny or whatever, but because I'm not just a stand-up comedian like Dave Chappelle. Y'all can be mad as fuck, but I'm still Dave Chappelle. Yeah. See, right now, I doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm jazz. And NBC can be like, well, no, well, you're not jazz listen, anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, jazz. You're not. Oh, you thought. You thought you were jazz. You are not jazz no more. And so I'm like, and it's also not like I'm walking on my tippy toes. But I know what you mean. But it's like, no, as an actor, be... it's kind of like more like mysterious. I won't oh, lie to you. You know, posting as much. And yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not finna post everywhere I'm at and stuff like that. Well, well fucking, uh, my hope. Yeah, yeah. You know, Kev. Kev. Yeah. yeah that nigga don't post. Bro, I don't Kev, blame him. Kev, don't, why? I don't, why? I'm a spokesperson. Why I'm would I dare? I'm why people get insurance. <laughs> insurance. I'm the whole reason. So I'm going to insure can. my ass. Yeah. Don't do nothing stupid. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Not, and also, the guy doesn't, like, he's a fucking straight arrow guy. Oh, yeah. Shit. But just sure. to say, like, it, you see it. Yes. And it's just like, no, nah, like, when you get into certain spaces, like, yeah. you can't play with that because not we're talking, all. you know. Every time insurance, middle America, fucking like, no. my my money. <laughs> my, my, my Regardless if I think it's right or right, whatever. Yes. They have the power to be like, well, it's gone. Right. Well, no, you're not doing that anymore. Yeah. No, no, and no, that no. fucks up the next thing. Yes. And yeah. And now they're telling them, like, yeah, he fucked all oh, yeah, we're not gonna hire him. Like, yeah. dude, you gotta in a way to be on your P's and Q's. Now it's not like I like I said, it's not like I'm out here tiptoeing around. Yeah. But certain stuff that like maybe a musician can say, then honestly, people might praise him for being Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> wow, he came up with that idea. Like, man, he's a leader. Like, you know <laughs> whatever you wanna <laughs> say. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I can game that. It's like, bro, I say one thing, man. And, yeah. I know. That's I mean, like I said, that is that is kind of partially even for whatever the fuck I'm out here trying to navigate. Yeah. Uh, whatever that is. I do know though that's partially why I'm going about things the way that I am cuz mm -hmm. it's that's always been and like no bullshit. It's all that's one of the few things that's always been scary to me. Yeah. Just the simple fact of 
it's an industry where I can I can play all the I can play the game right mm-hmm. and still get uh, uh. yeah like so oh a hundred percent yeah and it's one of the only industries. oh that's and that's yeah I don't like saying that I like saying one because sometimes I'll be like this is like the only industry where like I was telling my friend that he was like we're not the only one but like for just as an example mm-hmm. though. If I have a if I'm applying for to be a bank teller, right? And I meet all the requirements and I do my interview and I kill the interview and they say, when can you start? And I say, I can start right now. I probably ten times out of nine got that job. Right. Acting, you apply for that job. <laughs> you go in there, they say you'd be you are perfect for this job. They bring in the director. The director's like, yeah, 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 I love him. Why he was so funny. You take you listen to direction well too. Right. You're sitting there and they're like, "Wow, he does everything. He checks all the boxes, and you never hear from them again." Yeah. And they don't call you and tell you, "Hey, and by the way, man, sorry about that. You didn't get the job. We Bad. did love you, but we did go with Chelsea." Um, yeah, yeah. At least you could be just, like, "Okay, Chelsea, I'll Chelsea go. got five million followers on Instagram." Bro, man, what? <laughs> you just don't hear. Yeah. I was pinned for something, bro. I was pinned for like two months. And like you just have to just take it out your mind. Oh, you have to just turn that off and just. And that's why now, I man. There was one time, and you know this as an actor. Mm. What I do with auditions, bro, like right when I'm done, I throw that shit away. Tear that shit up, right? Yeah, you can't even with Bel Air audition, bro. I got a story about it. I turned down the audition, but we, we'll get into that. Ooh. But for audition, I, I walked in this one room, and I was so used to just because just just for your mental health, you got to throw that shit away. Now it gets tricky when you do that and then the callback and then now you're testing. <laughs> now you're attached to it. Yeah. Right? But that first audition, you rip that. The worst that that you have to do, if you rip up all those pages, is go print, print out some new one. And that's a blessing that you have to go reprint out that. But that's and, you know, good. <laughs> but nigga, rip that one time, bro. I was in the audition. I'm so used to doing that, like in person. I did the audition. Thank you guys so much. Bro. Just, I, I didn't even tear them though. I didn't tear them. But I just, on the way out, there's a trash can by the door, just tossed the sides away. And I don't know if that's why I didn't get it or not, because I didn't get that part. <laughs> but I was so used to, like, and now I'm done. I don't even want this no yeah. more. Because me harboring on something that I literally have no control over Zero. is so unhealthy. If my uncle, the director, or something, whatever, and I'm auditioning and whatever, yeah. now I can be a little bit more attached because I, first of all, I still did my work, I did a good job, and right. I have something working in my favor, right. sure. But if I'm just going in, Corey, I, what, it's 100 niggas outside to talk. Right. I, I see a group of niggas. <laughs> hey. I see you, I see Mike Wilds. I'm like, shit, damn, this niggas. It's a lot of oh, niggas honestly, out here a today. Lot of niggas, a lot of successful niggas, honestly. It's very slim. I'm going here, do my shit, depth. Right. Right. But yeah, man. Oh, yeah. just just real quick. I gotta hear. Wait, this. wait, dude. So the Bel Air audition. Swear to God, I can't make this up. You know how how we love Fresh Prince, bro, and Martin, and like I don't have to go into that. I already like, know where this is going, dude. I get the audition, and when I got the audition, there wasn't any sides, right? So at first, I get a well. I got the audition, and before I can check it, you know, the manager call you. Yo, I really want you to check out this audition. Um, it's due on Thursday, it's Tuesday, it's due in two days. It's for you to be uh, Jazz and the new Fresh Prince. I said, what? <laughs> Are you serious? Like, for real? Are you serious? Like, we're doing another sitcom? Keep in mind, Fresh Prince is my favorite show. Fresh Prince and Martin... Right. Are probably my favorite shows of all time. Like we talk about early, like what are your TV shows? Yeah. Like I'm a more movie, sit there, watch it. With TVs, I really just want something that's feel good, you know, Funny. stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I still watch TV, but my favorite show, mm. my favorite show of all time is probably Martin. Fresh Prince is like close second. Yeah. It's like very like, ah, like man, greatest black shows of all man. time. Like it's, and it's yeah. still relatable and it's still on and I still watch it to this day and you guys are telling me that we're doing a reboot that is going to be like a sitcom <laughs> I know, yeah. with a new we don't have we don't really need it. I still I still watch this. Right. Bro, I saw that and I turned it down. And then he called me, yo, yeah, man, I'm not doing this, bro. Like Fresh Prince, like I don't know if you know how important this show is. Like, well, you know, my white man. <laughs> I don't know if you know. And I'm like, but like, dude, like I'm not doing that. And like now I'm the guy in the reboot who it's terrible because it's a reboot and no one's gonna give it a chance. Yeah, first of all, regardless, and it's a sitcom, so it's like I'm not gonna get fucking made fun of. No, turn it down. And I turn down the role, turn down the audition. Audition, you know. Yeah. And usually when you turn down an audition, bro, 
you know, usually that day you might have banter with your manager if they don't want you to turn it down. But once mm-hmm. you guys end up that hang that phone up and make that decision, usually they move on. I've right. never gotten a call back to be like, yo, like, dude, the next day my manager called me back and said, hey, man, I'm not going to lie. I'm not letting you pass on this audition. So just do the audition. <clears throat> I'm going to get the script. But read the script and you're going to do this audition. Maybe wow. it'll make you... And I'm like, all right, whatever, man. If I gotta do it, you know how many auditions we do where it's I like, that, yeah. where it's like, okay, I'm just gonna go in there. Yeah. Like there was times where like, man, I get an audition and like it's at 8 a.m. and like it's 10 p.m. at night and I'm at uh, Rails taping. Right. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't have service, so at 11 I get the email. You have it at eight, and I'm like, I didn't get a chance. And they're like, bro, just go in to the director, read a quote, whatever. Just get your face in there. So I was like, cool, no pressure. I've done that before, so I'm like, okay, like I'm just gonna do that. Fine. Right. Right. I read the script and. Morgan, our showrunner, in 2019, he had like this little um, the Facebook little, little video, that right? Shit was little trailer. Yes, I thought that that was great at the time. I didn't correlate it two years later to that, and right. I'm like, what? So then I see that, and then we're like, trailer. If you want us to get a glimpse, I'm like, oh, it's this. It shit. was this, right, nigga? Long story short, like. Ah, I'm now. You know what I'm amazing. saying? And I really didn't even think that I got the role because it was so funny. Like I was talking to my mom, and my mom was like, "Honestly, you be a good jazz." And I'm like, "And hey, you know what's crazy? I'm I didn't want to just say that because <laughs> no, but it like it makes sense. Like yeah. it, it makes sense. And then you I, now I've seen you do it. You yeah. do your thing, but it's yeah. like. I wouldn't. There's certain niggas I'm sure who audition for who oh, I'd yeah. be like, nigga, no. Yes. Yeah, and you're not. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, and, and I get that a lot, bro. People are like, yo, people come to me like, like, I guess, you know, we just did such a good job with the show yeah. and just all the pieces. Like, it was just casted well, bro. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm I'm just forever, I'm forever thankful that, like, I get to work with these people. We're like a family, bro. I'm sure you can see that on, yeah. on the screen. But everybody just fits their role so well. well. Mm-hmm. That it's crazy how they casted us, and the and the craziest part too. So with the rail show, I'll say this: with the rail show, I didn't know that I got rail <clears throat> because you audition and then you um um and then you call back, and then now I'm chemistry Network reading studio, with rail yeah. in front of. But that was my last thing. So the thing was, uh, Jerry, um, the director, man, I love mm-hmm. him. He was a great director. Um, Jerry Cohen. Um. Jerry kept telling me to do it in different, different ways. He told me to do the same audition maybe five times next oh, wow. to Rel, next to Rel. Oh, okay. So I'm just doing it, obviously. But when I walked out, I was like, I didn't get that shit. He's telling me to do it over and over and over again, right? right. I end up getting the role, you know, saying time goes on. We're having a conversation. I'm like, yo, so that day, I really thought I didn't get it because you kept telling me to do it. I thought I was doing it wrong. He was like, no, I just wanted to see how, how well you could take direction. If I just told you, dude, okay, do that. And yeah, you gotta, I was like, okay, great, right? Right. Fast forward to Bel Air. So now I think I know how directors' minds work. <laughs> and everyone has their own process. Yeah. I am um, doing the chemistry and it's on Zoom. Uh, and I hate that. Yeah, but it is all, what it is. If this yeah. is all you guys got, what well, I'm not gonna do it. And I had two scenes to do. <clears throat> Bro, I did the first with Jabari, who plays one. Uh-huh. I did the first scene and Morgan, who has the has the whole showrunner and uh, all the other showrunners, yeah. right, they're on it, but their faces aren't shown. It's just me and Jabari talking. So at first, we just like kick, shooting the shit, whatever. Yeah. And when I tell you, after the first scene, he had no notes. He was like, okay, thanks. Second scene. Right then in my head, I was like, oh, I didn't get it. He didn't ask me to do it again. Uh, He's move on. Right. I, you know how sometimes they move on because we already know. So I do my second scene kind of like with no pressure because I'm like, I didn't get it. So let me just go ahead and do this. Yeah. Did it. And I immediately, I called my mom, bro. I called my mom right after. I said, I didn't get it. And she was like, why? Why do you, Did they tell you didn't get it? And I was like, nah, I just know. Like, I just know. They, they didn't ask me to do it again. They, you know. It was like a Jewish holiday. I forgot what holiday. Maybe Rosh Hashanah, Hashanah or something. <laughs> Probably, <Monday>. yeah. <clears throat> and so I um, end up getting a call Three days later, saying, and keep mind that whole weekend, I'm just like, I know that's the tough because you said I ain't get it, but you still like, but you still uh, like, they never actually did say no. And my mom has already been like, What are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah, if did you do it just like the other audition? Then fine. I'm like, Okay, go so the whole weekend, bro. I'm just sitting there, like, literally, I like it wasn't like I was depressed or anything, but I was like, So in my mind that I couldn't focus on anything, so like going out and stuff, I was like, No, I'm cool, like, I'm chilling, I'm on the game, but I'm just like thinking, like, Damn. 
You know how it is. He's nah, just like, yeah. it's just on your mind. Because you test it, right? Yes. So, then, so that means days, that means he I also signed it. that contract. Yeah. So but he was see, like, that is what it is. No, that's the mind fuck. Yeah, that's the, the mind, mind fuck. fuck. Is okay. So so watch this. So the three days later, they call me and they're like, okay, you're testing. Oh. They're like, so I'm like, okay, keep in mind, there's still another fucking loop to jump. Oh. So now I'm in it. They're like, okay, we're gonna get the contract. You see it. We, and that's the worst part. Imagine ever in any other profession signing a contract and you didn't even get the job yet. And not only, it's not even inside the contract. It's the seeing the number. You see, And the then number. you start going, man, if I get this shit, if I, I get could, this, why are you little, not showing me this? I ain't got to worry about the, nigga, them cyber trucks coming yeah. out. <laughs> Bro, I just like, I'm good, but also just that fear of the unknown because yeah. you're like, the fact that you guys can show me this, and also, you showed three other people. That's just what I'm saying. And the three other niggas who over, one over there, one yeah. over there, just signing. And, and, and also, and also, you know, like everything, you don't know who the other two people are. You can't even gauge. Like, okay, let me make myself feel better because I know that I went out for this, and I know the other two. I was like, nah, they right. can't be just. Or even like, oh shit, like the homie went out for this. Honestly, I fuck with him. He might get it, low key. You know, I'm a yeah. chill because if he gets it, I, I, I have some control. Like I knew it. You know, <laughs> I feel better because at least I ain't stupid. I know. But all this just, just sitting, <laughs> just sitting. And the craziest part about me getting the role is they were telling me like, you're testing. We should know by the end of the day or tomorrow. Of course you don't know at the end of the day. So you're fucking tripping all day. And then it's like eight and you're like, they're not going to call me at eight. Mm -hmm. Bro, the next morning, right? I go like work out or whatever. And obviously I'm still in my head, but I had a friend of mine, right? Mm -hmm. Text me and go jazz with the eye emojis. He had nothing to do with the audition or anything. He was an agent for another company, right? But I hoop with him, right? Oh. I guess he just know because you know in that in the production they, company, once somebody gets cast or whatever, then they start moving forward. So he knew about me because of something else. Like we have to get the writing done and like it, uh, we got to do jazz fitting. And he had a friend who was the wardrobe stylist, and they were talking about yeah, we got to fit jazz. It's this guy, whatever. So they had made the decision. Keep in mind, right when they make a decision, they don't call you immediately. Okay, is it yeah, jazz? Yeah. Okay, let's call them. Hey, hey, you just got it. We just told you. No, they made the decision probably that night before. It was okay. We'll call them. Tell them tomorrow. So I'm tripping. I swear to God, I'm in my apartment, right? And when I saw that, I literally tossed my phone. It was like <laughs> I was like, Your homie Kevin just said this. That was just really weird. I didn't even respond because it just threw me off. And like two hours later, I'm calling my mom and stuff. Like, I didn't even tell her about this. I'm just talking to my mom. And she's like, you know, whatever it is, you know, what's for you is meant for, it's you. for you. If not, it never was. Mm -hmm. And man, bro, my agent called me. And I was like, what is it? And he was like, in West Philadelphia, boy. <laughs> and bro, I just started going nuts. Like, nigga, yeah. So real quick, fast forward that. Now I'm working and I'm talking to the showrunner. And because I felt like, oh, I, you know, I know the how to direct and like, right, bro, I thought I didn't get it. Why didn't you make me do it? Like again, and and he was like, dude, sometimes in our process, when you just know, you know. And he said, honestly, when you came into the screen on Zoom and you and Jabari were just talking, we already knew yeah. it was gonna be. It. We already already seen everybody else, right? I guess that was the last, you know, audition. See, and that. And you they were like, know. oh, yeah, nigga, this is it. Like, what? Like, this is it. We don't have to. We got it. Right. But you're not thinking that as an, as an artist. No. You're like, bro, you think, first of all, you think about everything besides, besides, oh, I already got it automatically. <laughs> that's, right. what, that's what you never think. You have no context, <laughs> you though. Have no. You have no context. You don't know who they saw. You don't. You also, one of my biggest things I've realized, one of the biggest flaws to auditioning, which I kind of hate in general mm -hmm. now that I'm getting older, is like, Oh, right. I don't even have kind of an idea or blueprint of what the fuck you're trying <laughs> you're to make. trying to make at all. No matter if I get the breakdown or not. That's, yeah. That's like, unless you send me a 150 page script, which yeah. now I have to read. But like, <laughs> sometimes it's for hard. A no, for a fucking no. For a no, bro. Because yeah, like, huh. sometimes even like, sometimes my, act, my acting coach is like, they'll be like, okay, like, did you read the script? And I'm like, honestly, Eric, like, no, I didn't. And he'll be like, dude, it's completely, it's completely fine. Yeah. But like, there's certain, you know, I, I still haven't got there yet, but there's certain ways to like kind of skim a script That's because true. realistically what you just, you just made too much sense. Listen, I understand that this is my job, but if you think I'm out here reading 120 page scripts 
just so I can go in there and you can tell me no and I never hear from you again. And and, and I have no other connection to this yeah, production. Like, it's all. not like I'm like, might invest. It's not yeah, like I might like, like, oh, this is a good script. Maybe I can pl- or do or anything related to this. I'm going to read this <laughs> shit and never hear about this again. Or until me I see, about, until yeah. I'm writing down fucking Hollywood and Highland and see a nigga on the billboard. Exactly. So like, so no, no, I didn't. I didn't yeah. read that script. <laughs> Just because of fucking the, the average law, law of, like law of law, loss yeah. And gain. Like yeah. realistically, I go into auditions like I'm not gonna get this. Yes, but also have this. But thing I do my law. job. Yeah, I do yeah. the law of averages to where it's like the more no's you get, the closer you get to your yes. So you are gonna get these no's. This is acting. You're gonna be great for <laughs> the part and get these no's. Hold these but you no's. Thank God for the no's because your yes is right here. So, but you still gotta go through this it's a process. journey. It's a process. So it was long. You better get to getting told no so you can finally get that yes. Because the longer you wait, or the more you're like, eh. Reps. And Reps. this another thing too about being an actor that I really do respect is because me, like, I know the journey. So like, even like. Just talking to you mm-hmm. or Chris or our Kev, no matter what we discuss, I have a respect for you because we all go through that same journey right. of like, man, I know that you're on this and I know that you're Jake from State Farm, but I also know how many times you got told no and you kept going. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do that. A lot of people stop acting because that rejection, it, it does. It takes a toll on you. Yeah. But I know that you loved something so much that nothing could stop you from it. And that's something admirable about it. And because I'm not sitting here patting myself on the back, when I see other actors and stuff, and I'm like, look, now we're on the same. Like, I fuck with all y'all just because I know you're a real nigga yeah, of the strength. And I've never said nothing to you. But, like, mm-hmm. I know you're a real nigga because I know how long you've been acting. I know your first thing. I know how long you didn't do shit. I know you're doing this now. Mm-hmm. And regardless of who you are as a person without me talking to you, I know that you were told no a grip of times. You got close a lot of times. You almost thought about quitting, and you didn't. And now I respect you back. in that way. And and bro, back yeah. at you. And I feel like those are for sure it it shows you the kind of people you want to surround yourself with. Yeah, for sure. Because they're every like you said, every, everybody you just named, including yeah. yourself, like all fucking hustlers. Yeah. Like nobody's out hustlers. here just like, ah, well, maybe yeah. it'll happen and all I got this plan B over here. Like, nah, niggas are going or or even them niggas that claim that they're actors. You know, mm-hmm. hey man, like you know, like you know, I'm a, I'm an actor. You know, what I'm saying I'm trying to act or whatever. And like, first of all, I kind of know this nigga, and I'm like, everybody thinks that like it's like you said earlier, like you just be like, oh, you got your first audition, and now you're just jazz. You just popped up, and you were jazz. It was like, dude, do you actually want to go through this? You don't even know what it's like to go through it. Do you have a manager? Okay, that's fine. You don't. Do you have an agent? Okay. Are you in anything? That's fine too. Are you in any classes? No. Okay, that's where I start going. Okay. You don't do you, really want to. Do you do go this out thing. and watch classes, audit? Okay. Do you read books? Do you go out and just take certain like acting books and techniques? What are you doing? So, because you can't come up to me at the club and be like, hey, man, big fan. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm trying to act. Like, what should I do? Okay, I can tell you whatever. What are you doing right now? Because you just you introduce yourself as an actor. I'm an actor too. So, okay, you're an actor too. And I'm unlike. A lot of other people who just like, okay, cool, nice to meet you, move on. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about it if you really dead ass. Mm-hmm. And you're, me knowing you, like, like you know, you're not dead ass. You just told me that you're actually not taking any steps, really, towards your, did you do any plays when you were a kid? No. You just, somebody told you you can act and you think that it's easy. You want to be on TV. You want to be on TV. You don't want to be an actor. You don't want to be, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. Because it's like the difference between, like, uh, like I want to be an actor and I want to be famous. Yes, those are two different two things. Two different, different things. Very different things. Two different things completely. I think, honestly, my true answer is I like both. Like, for real. Yeah. Like, and, and not on some, like, Eric. You want to be a known actor. I want, <laughs> I want, I thought, I think when I, I'm going to just say it like this, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But if I'm, if I have the capacity to, with what I do and choose to do with my life, change people's lives now not drastically but like oh my god that was relatable i'm going through something similar right i get sometimes i'll do certain lines on bel-air and dudes be like bro when you said bro when i came from uh alabama and i moved out here bro i was tripping and i saw bel-air and you when you was like man when this town was trying to make you forget who you are where you came from don't let it do that man that shit really sat with me bro you really helped (laughs) me and i'm like that's crazy because when i did that it wasn't for that you know, I'm I'm just trying to be the most believable in that circumstance as I can. And if I can help somebody do that right. through comedy 
or whatever the case may be. You right. know what I'm saying? Drama or, or anything like that. That's something that I, like I really live for, and I appreciate when I you know get like, hey man, you putting on for the culture, man. Really fuck with jazz, like fuck the hey your jazz gotta take a picture shit. But just hey man, I really respect what you're doing, man. I, I make my kids watch it, like you know I'm right. like wow because it's just showing the black experience. So when I go back to saying famous, I don't mean like yeah like I want the money, cars, and shit. Like I want to be recognized for doing that to people. Yes, <laughs> like, I, know, I feel you. You know what I'm saying, no, like. That's... I don't mind being like, yeah, I remember it, man. Join up, man. I remember my, when I first moved out here and I watched your movie and mm -hmm. it helped me get off my... Man, I appreciate that, bro. I'm, I'm glad that I can do something that can help other people. If yeah. that's make you laugh, get away from your bad day. And like, mm -hmm. man, he made me laugh. That If anything, it don't have to be like change your life drastic. I ain't giving you money or building or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just saying if I can do even minute things, being recognized for it is not a bad thing. Thing, yeah, you know, and well, then that also grows your reach, yeah. And when that grows your reach, you can do like we talked about in the beginning, you yeah. can do more good more for shit. more yeah. people, yeah. And it amplifies, you know, whatever positive message you're selling, it yeah. Amplifies it. That's for sure why I started even doing this because it was a thought process of okay, there's a lot of people I know who are bro, like talented, fucking, yeah, like yourself, working actors, yeah. people, who, and but at the same time, we know how far we're trying to get yeah and we also know how much we've done and how hard we've worked but our stories aren't always amplified not at all so i was like man like that's something i want to do i want to show people what this game can be but i also yeah. don't want to sugarcoat it for them oh not at all because... bro that's that's kind of what i was saying when I'm, about being a pa mm -hmm. yeah. it's like no you need to know i was a pa bro like none of this shit is like like we were talking about like niggas think you just wake up and you're on tv bro like nigga, i was a pa bro yeah like I was a production assistant, bro. I was cleaning up shit from other under trailers. I was catching dead rats. I was getting yelled at from fucking For famous people saying, "I said I want still water in my trailer. It's sparkling in here." I just put water in there, bro. Like you know, like it's not the biggest deal. That'd be the craziest part too, because I know you'd be looking at them like, "For real?" I'm doing a lockup, <laughs> but the makeup people think they're like, "Oh, you're just a PA," and they mm -hmm. walk through anyway. What am I supposed to grab this lady? No, I'm not. And then now I'm getting cussed out on the mic, on the sorry, on the walkie. And I'm like, "Bro, this is a grown woman. I told her we're shooting right here." And she's like, "Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll grab this white lady and then get canceled from you an actor." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you Facts, talking about? Though. So I'm Facts. like, "I'm not going. You know, I can't do that." And now I'm just, I'm just taking the short end of the stick for all this shit. So it's like, bro, <laughs> this shit ain't sweet. And at the time, I wanted to be an actor. I started off a certain way. It's, you don't just wake up. Nobody does. Nobody. No, nobody. Not one person was just like, "I want to be an actor." Today. And they first thing. No. Not not just didn't get like get their first thing. Did that and then never had to look back ever again. Yeah, no. That just doesn't it's happen. That's not how it works. And also, you're not just like life. You're not ready for it to happen that way either. You're not. That's you, not how God works. It's, exactly. It takes, <laughs> it, you need to build. You need practice. Mm -hmm. You need to fuck up a few times. You need yes. some on the job training. You need it just yes. so when the time comes, you're ready for it. That's, yeah. My parents used to always say that. They'd be like, yeah, but you know, God's not going to give you nothing you're not ready for. Man. And. You know what? I'll say this. God, like God also, and you know, if you're not a Christian or whatever, like whatever higher power that yeah. you believe, the universe. Sometimes the universe works in ways where you, John 13, 7, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, you may not know, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, you may not know like what I'm doing right now, but later on you will understand. Right. I think it's like kind of a little bit more intricate than that, but that is the basis of it. And it's just having faith, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example that I didn't even see this until then, right? Until recently. Right. When I was up for real, I was also up for a show called The Neighborhood. The homie Marcel Spears is on it, man. Oh, great okay. show, man. He's doing great. Oh, uh, what? The name, is that what it is? Cedric? Cedric, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, right? Great show. Mm -hmm. I was up for that and um, Rel right. towards the same time. And the uh, the director really liked me and everything like that. But I chose, this was like testing, right? right. So thank God in testing, there's no one time you have a little bit of leverage because it's like, okay, what's your real answer? Because then we can go with them, you know, like right. we can go with somebody else. Right. You, you know, you, if you really want him, you can't be like, okay, we'll wait until we make a decision and call. No, nah, like, you got to let us know now. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up, kind of choosing rel over it right gotcha right 
Rel, great show. Had a great time. Learned so much from Rel. You know what I'm saying? Like the beginning of my career, man. Just so thankful. I was talking to Rel the other day, man. He's, he's just so proud of me and like big Y'all bro. Y'all both like, since yeah, then. Yeah, like dude, yeah. like just gotta love him, man. He yeah. really took a chance on me, man. Like as a green actor, he really didn't have to do that. Right. And uh, you know, I'm I'm forever grateful for him. Uh, show, you know, because of network stuff, like we go one season and stuff yeah. like that, and. Afterwards, I kind of had my period kind of as an actor because I didn't work like that for so long. And also, when you reach series regular, certain stuff you do, you're grateful and stuff, but yeah. it don't hit like the first time you did a commercial, the first time I was nah, a guest star, yeah. the first time I was... It don't hit like that because you was already there. It's like, like the first time you week. dropped five points yeah. and you dropped 35 points is nothing. <laughs> nothing, now. yeah. When you first time you dropped five, you're like, nigga, well, I hit a three and a two like I'm him. And you dropped 30 and you're like... <laughs> Uh, five points, you nothing. <laughs> so getting stuff like you know, I did Snowfall and stuff mm-hmm. like it, it. It's so interesting when people like recognize me from Snowfall yeah. too. I'm like, damn, you a real fan? You a real I'm fan? You, mean, <laughs> you know? So I did Snowfall. That was one of my dreams to be on Snowfall. That was cool. Yeah, that's a great, great show. Um, yeah. Right? And so, um, damn, I forgot my train of thought. Uh, you were talking about going from rail. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. neighborhood. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Just about how God works. So during that process. The neighborhood got a second season and right. a third mm-hmm. and a fourth, and they still going right now. Hell yeah, for real, it's a good show. Honestly, funny show, man. Shout out to my boy Marcel, bro, for real, doing a great job. I man. had my boy uh, Malik S, uh, who's one of the writers on the show. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah, I had him on okay, the got it. Yeah, so, yeah, doing great. So, of course, you have that thought as an actor. It's like, damn, should I have chosen? I should. Yeah, like, should I have chosen it? Now, at the end of the day, it's still like, what's for you is for you, mm-hmm. and, you know. You know, whatever the chips, wherever, you know, let the chips fall where they may, regardless, but you still just got to kind of move forward. But there's always that thing in your mind where it's like, damn, did I make a mistake? They're still going right now. Fast forward, now I'm in Bel Air, right? And I love Bel Air so much, man. Mm-hmm. You know, like... It's, I, a, it's a very a very different kind of look, too. Man. It's more of the look you'd want. Yeah. Because like, if you're going to do a reboot. That, and not only that, it's I'm just saying the the even just the age demographic and the people who watch it like yeah. it's a it's just co- more relevant and cooler like yeah. now if you're trying to get like I said older middle America uh, CBS shit, that would have been different but like what you couldn't have come on bro. you know what I'm saying what and I thought that that was so great too with the show because when the trailer dropped is when everybody was like they stopped talking shit because we were shooting the whole season and you see stuff in the tabloids yeah yeah and you're like, man, they're like, man, I'm not watching this shit. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. And we saw the trailer before and we were like, this is finna fuck everybody, everybody up. up. Yeah. And I got so many calls that they were like, nigga, I didn't know it was gonna be like that. This shit looked hard. <laughs> oh. It looked OD. <laughs> yeah. But I say really all that to say that I wouldn't have been able to do better if I was still on that show. Mm-hmm. If I was, on, if I chose the neighborhood. It was on that. And there was a great show and everything, yeah. but because I've experienced Bella, I, I wouldn't change, change it, it. Yeah. for the world. You know, okay. I love the fact I'm kind of, in a weird way, like I feel like too, like I'm a part of history yeah. because I feel like, and this is no knock, but I feel like we were the first reboot to not be like an actual reboot. I feel like it was more like a revamp or a reimagining mm-hmm. to where it's like, okay, we're going to change, we're going to also pay homage, but we're also going to like change parts of the story. Yeah. We're, you know, we're, we're going to do a couple of nods, but like, no, Jazz will get Hillary in this one. And then like, Jazz yeah. is not comedic like that. He actually, you know, owns a record cool, store nigga. Yeah. and stuff like, you know, yeah. like just, just little, little yeah. stuff. Yeah. And honestly, I'm, I'm just so proud and just thankful to be a part of something like this. I wouldn't change it for anything, but going back, it's like, in 2019, Shoo. I know you I were had like, no clue. I was like, damn, that could have been it, bro. Yeah, I gotta. And God was like, no, I made you choose real because I knew this was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I, so it's like, you, you gotta just have faith. There's a difference between like fear of the unknown, mm-hmm. but then also like walking by faith, not by sight, because I didn't see any of this. Right. I actually saw the opposite because you think you know all the answers and you're like, man, and that's probably going to be my last shit and I'm just going to be out here just like doing little shit. And, you know, all right, is my 
you know, representation going to drop me because I haven't worked in them. And yes, I've worked, but it's not like but I was it's not one of them like, things. Oh, I was on yeah. TV every week, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but now looking back, it's like, damn, I went the whole two year period where I not regretted, but thought about should I have made another decision? And God was like, just watch, just wait, just wait. Like, like just you know wait. what it sound like? Yeah. Like you said earlier, how the parents just already. Man, like, just, you, know, you just like, not. what? No, it's just like, just calm down, son. Just be patient, I promise. There's more than one way to get to and, what you want. Yes, and there's no end on patience. Like, man, I've been waiting a month. I've been waiting <laughs> six months. I've been waiting a year. How much patient do I have to get? Year and a half. I'll just be a little bit more patient, yeah. trust me. And just look, like, be patient, don't quit. And then at the end, you're like, oh my God. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God, that I was patient. Like, yeah. so uh, it's just God. God is God is funny in that way. Yeah. So where no matter what really happens in your life, even if it's really bad or negative, like a like something bad that happens to you, it's like you may we really may not understand why it's happening to you right now. Yeah. But you might find out in five, six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, when I did that, oh my God, and then I met that person, and he. And then now he, oh, and that's why I even did that movie. That was that the only was reason terrible. you were there. Yeah. That was it. You were that supposed to meet it. that guy. And then for some reason, y'all didn't talk for a couple years, yes. but then y'all started talking again. And then that was what ended up. And he remembered doing this. And then now you're in this and yeah. the Oscar goes to you. And then I, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> and all because you did this short film that, you know, right. nothing really happened with it. Maybe you didn't finish or whatever. And it wasn't that good or whatever. Something bad happened. But you did meet that one guy. You yeah. did meet that one guy. You guys were cool for a little bit. And you was probably the coolest to him. And then years later, mm-hmm. and then that happened right there. And so whatever happens to you in life, and I'm saying like anything, is, it's a lesson. Everything is a mm-hmm. lesson. Even if it's not like a lesson right there, I was like, damn, with this, my lesson is, man, patience has no time on it. Yes. And what is for you, it's like what I said with the blinders. It's like, bro, your, role, your road is different than someone else's road. Even and even if it's just ever so slightly, it's yes. still not their road. Yes, something ha- things just have to be different. Yes, or even like even on Instagram and stuff like that, you'd be like, "Man, I'm that nigga's age, bro." Like, I'm you can't be jealous either. Like, oh, I'm better actor than that nigga, bro. Like, bro, yeah. he like two years younger than me. I went out for that role. Like, that's me. That's his journey. That's his, journey. his journey was to get that yada yada. And then you'll look back if you really don't. You'll look back and be like, "Damn, I was trying to be on this show, that show, that show, this show. I didn't get either of those shows." But now I'm where I'm at, and like, where are they at? Bro. So did you? Because you can have that. Go ahead, do that. Do that Get movie that. that you wanted so yeah, bad, or what? Bro. But you felt like all oh, you deserved. Yeah. But you wouldn't be here. You probably do that movie, and you done or whatever, or whatever that other person is to where it's like it doesn't matter if they're behind you or in front because all that changes. All that matters is you have a finish line that you have to get I, to. I equated. I always equated to traffic. Okay, bro. When you're in traffic, you got motherfuckers who are driving who have no clue where they're going. Yeah. You got motherfuckers who are like, no, I got to get there in the next 10 minutes. Yes. Somebody who just blew past you. Yep. Now you're passing them as they're sitting in traffic. Traffic, yeah. That happens all the time. <laughs> all the time, bro. And like, that's life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people, you might be going five minutes away. This nigga has, this nigga's going two hours away. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Wow, so it's I like, actually never put it in the traffic. Sometimes yes. you you mad because you ha- behind somebody who's driving all slow. They got a kid in the car and they only going up the street. And they only going up the street. And you going to wherever the and fuck you And you late. Going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's crazy, but yeah. it's, it's life. No, that's real, bro. That's real, man. <laughs> man. Not for real, man. But yo, thank yo, thank you so much for coming through, man. This is this is a fun ass interview, bro. bro. Honestly, this was great. I felt like in a in a weird way, it's not it wasn't like an interview. We were just really just up. shooting yeah. the shit, man. That's what that's what and we do. I, <laughs> that's what we do. I really I really enjoyed Thanks, I really bro. enjoyed this one. But yeah, man, this is um. This well, yeah, because some people ask interviews and they just ask stupid ass questions. Yeah, yeah or like, like have this thing like this, and it's nothing wrong with being structured or anything, but you can get information out in like kind of like a casual natural That's way. That's how I feel. I ended up telling shit and I was like, you didn't even ask me about this, but let me go ahead and tell you. And this, I'm you sitting know. here like, thank you. Yeah, like, that's, <laughs> that's, bro, that's how it's supposed to be. But yeah. I've noticed most people who don't, if you're not just, like for example, when it's people who aren't great at talking, mm-hmm. then sometimes I have to really have like, okay, let me touch on this. Got it. So I can this. spark you to yeah, say something. Yeah, but you like Flow. I, yeah, and yeah. I love that because I'd rather shoot the yeah, shit. Yeah, I'd rather shoot the shit. And okay, that was good. Okay, cool. It was. <laughs>
<laughs> but nah, thanks, bro. I appreciate and also, bro, watch the boys, bro. I'm telling you. I will. I will. Just watch them. And I'd say to, and you probably do this anyway, but like, don't just watch. Like, I'd say watch the first three, then have your opinion. I think that you're going to No, up. I agree. Because, yeah, if you watch one, a lot of times yeah. it doesn't do. You got to get the world. Cool. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, but. Knowing you, you would love this show, bro. Okay, I'm, I'm in. You, you are show. literally the third person to tell me about. So I, I'm yes, in. bro. I'm in. Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. <laughs> Thanks again, bro. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, bro. And for we real. out. Peace.